Hey y'all, we are enjoying just a beautiful fall here in the United States and I love getting out and taking photos of the leaves changing on the trees. Here is a photo that I've took in, taken in a corn stalk and as I look at it, the colors aren't quite as vibrant as I remember them being in person. And here is a edited version where you can see that this photo really, really pops over the one that came straight out of the camera. I want to share with you a tip that you can use in Photoshop Elements, something that many people do not realize is there, and that is the Camera Raw Editor. The Camera Raw Editor is a free download from Adobe, so you can go to their site and search for it. You have to download the correct one for your version of Photoshop Elements. You have to read the installation instructions because it's a little different with each version. But basically, you're just going to be putting a plugin file into a full, another folder on your computer. And once you get that installed, <coughs> you can utilize it even on JPEG photos. You do not need uh, to have raw photos in order to utilize the things that are there. One of the things that is in there is a vibrance slider. This is uh, something that is in the full version of Photoshop, but you don't see it here. In the full version of Photoshop, um, it will be under the new adjustment layer uh, icon, but it's, it's actually here in Photoshop, but you have to use the camera raw editor. But you can open up JPEGs in the camera raw editor, and that is what I'm going to show you here. Um, now, of course, you're not going to have as many artifacts in your file to uh, utilize the editor to its potential uh, when you have a JPEG as opposed to a RAW. But if uh, you know, you're not a professional and you're just doing this for your own enjoyment, you know, bringing your RAW photos in um, to the editor is just perfectly fine. Um, go to the File drop-down menu and we all overlook this Open As. Uh, we don't uh, use it very much. We go straight to the open one. But if you choose open as and navigate to where your photo is, and in the drop down menu, which is normally the default for PSD, choose camera raw instead. <clears throat> and when you make that choice and click open, it opens it up in the camera raw editor. And I'm not going to go into great detail about this. I think a lot of it you can play with and um, figure out. It opens up with the zoom tool active, so if you click down, you can zoom in. If you hold down your Alt key, um, you can zoom back out. You can also zoom here by selecting one of these levels or using uh, this plus or minus here. The next one is your hand tool. Of course, you can also get your hand tool by holding down on your space bar. The next one is the white balance tool, and you can look at that much like you would uh, the uh, tool in uh, Photoshop Elements for getting rid of uh, a cast, a color cast. And you would just click uh, right down on a white part of your a photo. We also have the crop tool, straighten tool, red eye removal, and opening a preference dialog box. But over here what I want to share with you um, is the saturation slider and the vibrance slider. Now normally we would think to uh, bump up our saturation on our photo and you can do that um, within this editor, and I'm going to go ahead and do that to show you 
how what a big difference it makes but you can also look at the vibrant slider as working similarly to the saturation slider only what the vibrant slider does is it only saturates those things that aren't already saturated so it kind of uh, picks and chooses and this you can see when I saturate it I'm going down and then making it more vibrant gives it a much better feel um, and, and makes it much more uh, natural than the saturation slider. The uh, vibrant slider just like the saturation slider you don't want to overdo it. There are a lot of other great things in here. Um, clarity, contrast, brightness, just the brightness, you can adjust the blacks. Now when you move the blacks you want to observe you do have your color hexagram up here and you can watch it as you move uh, to, uh, to see what it does up there. And I think bringing in some of the blacks is good. You have your uh, fill light if you want to change it. Recovery. Um, your exposure, which if you click on auto, you, it will automatically set your exposure for you. Um, go back to default and set that yourself. Of course, if I move too far up on my exposure, I lose some of uh, what I'm getting from the clouds. My exposure is actually not too bad, I think, in this photo. You can change the tint from here. Is something that you feel is more realistic. You can change the temperature. Ooh, that actually knocking the temperature down really seems to help my photo. Bringing the black up, vibrance, bringing the contrast up. Now I think my photo is really beginning to pop. If you click here, you can uh, sharpen it. And uh, reduce the noise. So I'm just randomly moving sliders around and I'm not going to go into detail about what each of these do. I do want to mention that um, before you open your photo you might want to make a copy of it because uh, once I open it up in this camera raw editor it seems to uh, permanently make those changes unless I hit cancel and so you don't want to accidentally mess up your original photo so um, if I get that whiteness thing and click on this now that really makes it pop some more <clears throat> um, I can hit control Z and undo it if I want so uh, there's a lot that you can do in here um, what you cannot do in here is uh, edit um, with layer masks and I know sometimes I might want to make my sky more vibrant and not the color of the stalks or whatever and use layer masks and so you are limited a little bit in here in that way when you're done click open image and it saves it it saves your changes and opens it in Photoshop elements where you can edit it some more or click file and save as and save it. I want to go ahead and open up the other photo that I had here because I want to share with you um, what it does uh, for faces when you are moving the vibrance. Um, the color of the faces <clears throat> will uh, be affected much less when, of course that's way too far, when you're moving the vibrance to uh, make things uh, more vibrant as opposed to saturation. See when I move up the saturation it's saturating everything and the faces get all red and yucky really fast. But remember where I said that the vibrance uh, keeps certain um, colors 
as uh, they are. And you can see as I move up the vibrant slider, the corn stalks got much more vibrant, but the colors of the skin stayed the same. And so um, that really helps to make a, a big difference in uh, this. <clears throat> Ooh, yuck. Anyway, uh, <laughs> I'm beginning to play and it's uh, always fun to play. And so I wanted to point out with the, to you that uh, this, if you're having trouble editing a photo because um, it has a skin in it, then um, do certainly uh, go in here and use the vibrance rather than the saturation to edit your photo. And so I hope uh, you get out there and explore, install something new, and play, and have a little bit of fun uh, making your photos uh, pop. <laughs>